Well, 2023 is pretty much over. It is time to sit down and have a look at what my favorite figures of the year were. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. Now, 2023 has, I think it's been pretty universally agreed, been probably the best year in the Black Series history. Uh, it was also my first full year on YouTube, so it's been a hell of a lot of fun. But in terms of character choice, in terms of the figures that we actually got, in terms of how far engineering has come, it's just been such a great year. It's so hard to put into words how good it has been as a collector. I have been very very well fed this year. It's been really, really great. But what have been the best figures of the year? Because we have had some really cracking figures this year, and I'm not even going to pretend that this year, trying to narrow down which ones I thought were the all-time best, was incredibly challenging. That's just the position that you put yourself in when you're trying to decide what the best figures were. You're always going to have a figure that you wish you could talk about, but there are so many figures that are better than it that you have to just kind of put that aside and just concentrate on were the best of the year. So with all that in mind, it is time to once again sit down and talk about the top 10 best Black Series figures of this past year, of 2023. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into talking about the rules to qualify for this list, because of course there are rules. There are always rules. Firstly, to qualify for this list, the figure must have been released this year. Now, we're counting everything from Wave 35 all the way back at the beginning of the year, which was predominantly the Andor Wave. Uh, everything from that all the way to the second Ahsoka Wave. Now, that's the one that came with Hera. It also had Pre Vizsla in it and the Mandalorian R2-D2. Everything that came out between those two waves qualifies for this list, and that includes store exclusives, online exclusives, exclusives, the works. Second rule to qualify for the list, it has to be a figure that I personally added to my collection this year. I'm only going to talk about figures that I've actually gotten in hand and I've been able to explore myself. So that does unfortunately mean that Darth Malak doesn't qualify because I was never able to track him down. I'm sure he would make the list. He's made so many other people's lists, but I've just had no luck finding him, so I have to let that one lie. Both of these have to be true for the figure to qualify for the list. It both has to be a figure that released this year, and it has to be a figure that I added to my collection this year. The Clone Wars Darth Maul missed the mark last year because I wasn't able to track him down in time. I did get him this year, but technically he was released last year. So once again, he doesn't qualify. Those are the rules. Let's get into some honorable mentions. And this time around, I have three and I can cover them all in one go because they're all part of the same kind of wave. It is the Ezra Bridger, Sabine Wren, and Ahsoka Tano, all from the Ahsoka show. These three figures are absolutely incredible. It absolutely broke my heart to not put them on the list because they are so, so good. Something that the Black Series has consistently done well is bring animated characters into a kind of faux live action appearance when they're updated to feel like part of the line. Well, something that's happened this year quite a lot is animated characters have made the transition into live action themselves, and Ezra and Sabine are just two of those characters. As you might expect, their Black Series figures are immaculate. I got everything I wanted out of them. The engineering is exceptional. The appearances look great. The paintwork is so, so good. I just love it. I will absolutely be looking at this Ezra as being my Season 3 Rebels Ezra that I've always wanted. What? Yeah, I get a similar vibe off of the Sabine figure as well. She looks incredible. This has been a great year for brilliant head sculpts, and we will get into that on the list. This was one of the best. I was so, so pleased with it. And of course, I have to throw an honorable mention into the return of my all-time favorite Black Series mold. I didn't want to put her on the list because that felt like I was cheating, and there were so many other figures that I wanted to talk about, but yeah, of course this Ahsoka is exceptional. It is so, so good. It was so good last year. It's so good this year. I counted it as an honorable mention to try and be fair to the other figures that are on this list, because I don't want to sit here and say, yeah, this pretty much one-to-one re-release 
this is going to be top in the list again. That's cheating. It's cheap. So yeah, those are my picks for my honorable mentions. Pretty easy. Get them out of the way nice and quick. So let's not mess about. Let's get into the list itself. First off, coming in at number 10 is the Anakin Skywalker from the Force Spirit 3 pack. I absolutely adore this figure. I absolutely adore this set. Like, it took everything I had to not include the Yoda on this list as well for just being such a great update to the original Force Spirit Yoda. But really, the selling point for me on this set was the Anakin, and what a great job they did with him. He looks so good. That updated head sculpt, the way that they've kind of worked in the paintwork and that beautiful luminescent color, it just looks so brilliant. I got these figures out and put them on my bookcase to kind of like, you know, do a quick little thing for my Instagram just to make myself happy, and they have stayed there ever since because they are gorgeous figures, and this one is by far the best of them. Now, it's by no means a massive feat of like Black Series engineering. We're still dealing with a pretty similar and familiar looking mold, but part of what makes a figure make this list at the end of the year is just how much joy it brings to me. And this one, it just made me so, so happy. It was going to be the number one figure that I asked for on my Return of the Jedi wish list, but fortunately enough for me, Hasbro went and released it long before I even made that video. I got everything I wanted out of this release. This figure alone made the set worth buying for me. So the updated Force Spirit Yoda, the return of the Force Spirit Obi-Wan Kenobi, they were basically just icing on the cake for this exceptional Force Spirit Anakin. I haven't really seen anybody else talking about the Force Spirit figures, so I'm kind of sticking my neck out here, but yeah, I absolutely adore this figure, and it is an easy pick for number 10 on my list. At number 9, we have the Book of Boba Fett Twin Pack Edition of Cobb Vanth. I absolutely adore this guy. <laughs> he is so, so cool. He spent so long on my coffee table just because I couldn't stop messing around with him. He looks so, so cool. Now, the Mandalorian Cobb Vanth made the top 10 last year. This figure is probably better than it in every way, shape, and form. Just by taking off that bulky Boba Fett armor, you get an entirely new figure, which is entirely its own thing. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be including this figure on the list this year, and then I was watching somebody else's collection video, I think, and my Nana pointed out just how much she absolutely loved the way this figure looks. The head sculpt, the way it looks like it's just kind of a swaggering cowboy in every pose you put it in. And you know what? I 100% agree. It is an exceptional figure and it 100% deserves to be on this list. They absolutely nailed the likeness to Timothy Oliphant. It is one of the best head sculpts they have ever done. And by applying this modern Black Series articulation, any pose you put him in just captures his character 100%. It is like you've plucked him from the screen and put him on a table. It is absolutely perfect, and I love it. I feel like this has been a year for Black Series figures that are just people. Like, people in just kind of spacey Western costumes. And Cobb Vanth is no exception to that whatsoever. But what makes him better than pretty much every figure in the Andor line is just how well they have captured this character in this figure. You know, you can pose him with his hand on his belt like a sheriff. You can pose him just like whipping his gun out of his holster. It is so much fun to play with. And you have to to include that when you're thinking about what the best figures of the year were. Like, what were the figures that were the most fun to play with? And Cobb Vanth is 100% up there. I don't know, man. I said I wanted the original figure as soon as he walked on screen in The Mandalorian. I said I wanted this one as soon as he walked on screen in Book of Boba Fett. I am 100% happy with what I got. Cobb Vanth comes in at number 9. At number 8, it is another Book of Boba Fett figure. It is Black Crescenton. I was thrilled when they said this guy was coming back out. I never really bought into the overhyped controversy surrounding the comic original. It's still a good figure and I still like it, but this one is the one that we all wanted. This is the one that I wanted. This live action, series accurate Black Chrysanthemum with that whopping great cannon, that incredible updated live action likeness. It's 
so, so good. I'm so, so pleased with it. This guy just looks mean. He looks intimidating. He looks exactly like, once again, that you've plucked him off the screen and stuck him on a shelf. He's perfect in every way, shape, and form. But if you have to call it down to specifics, for me, it's the paint job. They did such a good job with it. Now, as much as I may like that comic accurate original, one thing I will say is, yeah, it was lacking in the paint department. You cannot say that about this updated deluxe version. There's so much detail on his fur. There's so much detail in his face. He's scowling. He looks so cross. I'm so pleased with him. The updated sculpt work on his armor. It's all incredible. I absolutely love this figure. It was such an improvement over the original, and it's just so hard to put down. I adore this figure in every way, shape, and form. He looks great on my shelf. He looks great as part of a Book of Boba Fett display. He is an easy pick for number eight. Coming in at number seven is Wicket. Now, part of the reason that I say the 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi line has been the best that we've gotten is entirely to do with this guy. I adore this figure so, so much. I said when he came out that the amount of paint on this figure, the amount of articulation for such a small figure, it just blows my mind. And it really shows the incredible lengths that the Black Series can go to when they really want to. They really packed this box out with everything you could possibly want. He has his spear, he has a bow and arrow, he's got a club, and with all of that said, he is still an exceptionally well-made figure. You can get him into whatever pose you like for an Ewok. We say it all the time on this channel, the Black Series does aliens so, so well, and there are a couple more coming up on this list, but the way they've done Ewoks, every single Ewok figure they've done has been a fantastic addition to the line. And as a fan of Ewoks, as a fan of Return of the Jedi in general, that makes me endlessly happy. This figure brings me so much joy, I cannot even tell you. Even down to the glossy little application on his eyes to give them that little shine amidst all of the other paint apps. I can't believe they went to such lengths for such a small figure. Great paint work, great articulation, great value for money. Wicket is an exceptional figure and an easy, easy pick for number seven. At number six, it's the re-release we've all been waiting for, R2-D2 from the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary line. What an update to an outdated and antiquated sculpt that was just too small. The new R2-D2 is everything you could want and more. I'm sorely tempted to go out and buy every single one that I find because there are so many places in your collection that you can display an R2-D2. And for the longest time, I've only had the one Dagobah one that's covered in mud, is too small, and only really fits in one scene. I think if I come to do a uh, Dagobah diorama, I might just put him in the background so he looks like he's just a little further away, and maybe that'll fix the height issue, but this new one is just everything I wanted and more. All of those accessories from the original set, minus the jets, but I can live without the jets. Gone is that crazy little gimmick where you twist the head and the foot comes out. I just, we didn't need it. It didn't need to be part of the figure. I adore this figure so, so much. Take all this and add to it the fact that they've managed to incorporate accessory storage into the figure in a screen accurate manner. I'm pretty sure that's how they work. I think when they're in the N1 Starfighters, the heads come up a little and pop out of that little hole because there's no way you can fit those shoulders in that narrow little section. But then yeah, having that head lift up and have you be able to store the accessories inside it, I have honestly forgotten multiple times where I've put my R2-D2 accessories and I'm always surprised when I pop the lid off and there they are. They're all just tucked in there nice and safely. The paint on this figure is just a thousand percent perfection. I absolutely love it. The whites, the silvers, the blues, the little dash of red. I adore it. It looks so, so accurate to his film appearances. And I love what this figure represents. It represents the idea that Hasbro are prepared to go back and revisit old releases and make improvements. We kind of saw that in the archive line 
fine the other year when they went back and they were, you know, correcting Leia's height or fixing Veteran Han's face. Little touch-ups here and there. I like to think that it's because of how well-received those figures were that that's why we were able to have a look and see a new R2-D2 rebuilt from the ground up, fixing an age-old problem that's been in the line since the very dawn of its existence. This figure just makes me happy and it makes me very, very happy and hopeful for where the future of this line is going. For all these reasons and more, the 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi R2-D2 definitely deserves its spot at number 6. For number 5, we're going back to the Book of Boba Fett one more time for the twin pack edition of Cad Bane. Every time Hasbro do this character, they knock him out of the park. Every time he's come out, he has made a top 10 list on my channel. The Braca Cad Bane was on the best of 2022. The Clone Wars Cad Bane was on the best of all time. And now the Book of Boba Fett Cad Bane has made one of the best of 2023. If you want to talk about feeling like you've plucked a character straight off the screen, this Cad Bane figure is just next level. It is so, so good. And I think what makes me happy the most about it is how much they could have gotten away with just doing the odd, you know, re-release, retool bit. But they didn't. It looks so, so brilliant and it looks so true to his live action appearance. Another moment that I just did not see coming. They have perfectly captured his likeness. And the reason I got this one and not the mainline release is because that little snarl that he's doing on his face is just perfect. It's everything that you want out of this character. That little streak of arrogance, those little jagged teeth, it's so perfect. I have spent weeks posing this figure, getting him into different positions, and every single time I am blown away by how well it captures this character. And I'm probably biased because Cad Bane is my favorite bounty hunter of all time, but you have to admit, getting this figure figure in hand, looking at the different shades of brown and how well they complement each other, and then how well they contrast against the blue of his skin, the red of his eyes, that little gleam that you've got in there, and just that perfectly characterized snarl. I'm so, so pleased every time I look at this figure. He has become a permanent part of my Book of Boba Fett display. And of course, you can't ignore all of the blast and flame effects that came with him. So good, such a great inclusion that they didn't even have to do. They sculpted new fire for Cad Bane because they recognized the fact that his flamethrower doesn't look the same as Boba Fett's flamethrower. That's an attention to detail that I just can't turn my nose up at and that's why Cad Bane from the Book of Boba Fett twin pack comes in at number five. At number four it's time to start talking about some old Republic figures because we're talking about Bastila Shan. By far and away the best human female sculpt they have ever done in the Black Series and I will die on that hill. There is is so much femininity in this mold. You cannot help but get some of the best poses you could ever get out of a Black Series figure out of it. And then add to that probably one of the best faces they have done in years. I am so, so pleased with how this face came out. We're going to be talking about alien faces and ugly faces in a minute, but this is probably one of the top five human faces they have ever ever done. The way this figure is crafted just makes me so, so happy. There are so many intricate layers of overlays that let them all hang down no matter what you do with the main figure underneath. There's nothing that should be hanging down that ends up sticking off at an angle when you get her into a dynamic pose. The body goes into a dynamic pose and then the drapes and the clothing hang down like they're supposed to. It's so, so good. I have been putting more and more female characters on my wish lists ever since I got this one in hand because I finally realized we can really knock these characters out of the park now. If we just do exactly what they've done here and do it again and again and again, we can get some great female figures into the line. That and they've absolutely nailed her lightsaber. I love the color on the blade. I love the paintwork on the hilt. The whole figure is just a masterpiece. I cannot put her down. I had absolutely no intention of building a little older Republic display on my desk. I was just going to have the two Revens there and call it a day, but when Bastila came out and I got her in hand, I just, I couldn't stop looking at it. I needed her front and center on my desk where I could see her every day. By far and away, the single best human female figure they have ever done, Bastila Shan, comes in at number four. At number three, it is most people's figure of the 
yeah, it's Darth Malgus. Who saw this one coming? Like, who thought, oh yeah, I've got Darth Malgus on my 2023 Black Series bingo card. They did such a good job with this figure. A long, long time ago, back before I was collecting the Black Series, and before the Black Series really knew what it was, because they were still just kind of sticking that tag onto all kinds of different figures, I bought a three and three quarter inch Black Series Darth Malgus. It was the first Star Wars figure that I had bought myself in years, and I was blown away by how good it was. Well, this one has just decimated it in every way, shape, and form. The size, the bulk, the articulation, the paintwork, the detail, the work they did on that hood. They've created one of the best hoods in the entire line. Hoods have always been something where I've just kind of gone, oh, just, just stop doing them, just stop trying. It always comes out all poofy and up in the air, and it doesn't sit properly. This one sits perfectly. I absolutely love it. It gives me such hope for figures moving forwards that come with hoods. I mean, I can't wait to see what this new Darth Sidious is gonna look like because maybe we'll have a new hood for it. Let's find out. This figure is just everything I wanted and more. He is a manifestation of the great, great work that the Black Series can do. And they really hone in on a character and just go, let's, you know, let's really knock this one out. And then going the extra mile to have a removable face mask so that you can see his decimated face underneath. I just love it. It looks so good. And you know, I always make a point of saying that I wasn't massively into the Old Republic games when they came out. I never really got into them. I've always kind of liked Malgus just because I like his story and I like where it goes and I like him as a character. But nothing prepared me for how much I was going to love this figure. Nothing at all. The extra length on the lightsaber just, it just blows it out of the park. <laughs> and mixing metaphors, that's how much I love this figure. <laughs> He has been, rightfully so, a lot of people's favorite figure of the year, and I completely agree with you. He 100% deserves it. But for me, he comes in at number three. At number two is Old Master Maul. Now, when they announced this figure, I had no idea how much I was going to love it. I almost, almost didn't pick it up. I saw it on a shelf and I was like, eh, maybe another time. But then I started to hear the great things that people were saying about it, and I was like, you know what? I've got my $5 off at GameStop for the month. I'll go and grab him. And what a figure. What a figure. He is so, so good. The articulation alone, this is probably the best articulated figure in the Black Series. It's definitely the best articulated Maul. There was all of us thinking that Clone Wars Maul was going to be the be-all and end-all of Maul figures. No, this one is far and away better. There's one thing those old Maul figures have kind of fallen short on for me is capturing the athleticism of this character and this figure finally finally gives us a figure that can capture that athleticism a hundred percent you just move his joints around and you get everything you could possibly want but we're not just talking about the mold here the engineering the articulation it just looks so perfect it's so naturally more once again they've nailed the alien head sculpt as they do every time I love that little grimace that he has on his face, that little scowl that he's wearing. It's so, so perfect to his character. And it works so well when you're putting him in all kinds of different athletic poses to have him wearing that expression as opposed to the more neutral look that we get in most Black Series figures. That They work for them, they work for characters who are just kind of holding a neutral pose, but for a Maul you want something a little different. You want something a little better. This is far and away my favourite Maul they have ever done done, and I doubt he will be dethroned anytime soon. <laughs> I honestly can't think of many other malls they could put into the line. Maybe if they do a solo mall one day, I can return to that statement and see if I still feel the same way, but for the time being, Old Master Mall is far and away my favourite, and he comes in at number two of the best figures that came out in 2023. But my number one pick for the best Black Series figures of 2023 is Jedi Survivor Cal Kestis. 
I know, I'm as surprised as you are, but I cannot leave this figure alone. We've talked a couple of times on this list about figures that look like you've just plucked a character off of a screen and put it on your shelf. Well, this figure is that for me in spades. I never really mess around with any of the character customization or updated aesthetic looks when I'm playing these games, so the base neutral Cal is always my Cal, and maybe that's why I've got such an attachment to this figure because it just captures that likeness so perfectly. I was always satisfied with the original Jedi Fallen Order cows. You know, the original release, and then later down the line, the deluxe release with the double-bladed lightsaber. I was always satisfied with those. I didn't mind the faces on them. This one is so much better. It just perfectly captures where he's at in his arc right now, as this kind of, you know, embittered warrior lashing out against the Empire because they've just hurt him so many different ways and he just wants to hurt them back. But what really sells me on this guy is the articulation, it's the engineering. I've said a couple of times on this list that no matter what pose you put the figure in, it just looks cool. Well, Cal just looks natural. Every time you put him in a pose, you know, whether you've got him with his lightsaber, his gun, both at the same time, you know, some figures can look kind of awkward if they've got both of their accessories accessories in both hands. Not this one. It just looks so natural. It looks like it's just, yeah, I've got my lightsaber in one hand and my gun in the other. What of it? I'm pairing them both up. When I was working on building this list, any time I was talking about another figure's articulation, or another figure's paint job, or the sculpt, or the artistry, or the engineering, or the head sculpt, anything like that, I always came back to this figure. You know, I was talking about Old Master Maul, and then I was like, yeah, he's really good, he's really well articulated. That Cal Kestis is a little bit better though. Or when I'm talking about Bastila Shan's face. Oh yeah, Bastila Shan, fantastic face. Best female likeness in the entire line. But if you want to talk about great likenesses that came out this year, I have to bring up Cal. Black Chrysanthemum's paint job, Cobb Vance's posability and how natural he looks in each pose, I just have to bring up Cal every single time. And it's crazy for me to think about that I almost didn't get him, I almost thought, now, you know what? I'm happy with the original figure. I like that figure. I think I'll stick with that one. But then I found him on that trip to the UK. I believe it was in Forbidden Planet out in Bristol. I found him and I just, I looked at that box and I looked at that render and I was like, that looks really, really good. I think I will take that home. And I am so glad I did because I have spent hours, days, weeks putting this guy in different poses. And, you know, usually I'm pretty satisfied with a pose once I've found it. Like, once I've found the pose, whether I have a look at Action Display's channel and you know, have a look at the poses that he's done for them and just sort of pick one out, I stick them in the pose, I put them on the shelf, and I'm perfectly happy. Some of these figures behind me have not changed their pose in years. Cal, I could put him in different poses every week and never get bored. I could never get bored of finding a different pose, whether it's holding the saber in both hands or with the saber behind him and the blaster out. I just, he just looks so natural, no matter what pose you put him in. And pairing him up with the accessories from the old figures, the old lightsaber, the old double-bladed lightsaber, the holocron, whatever you like, it all just works. This is such a good figure. I have had endless amounts of fun with it. I'm basically just gonna sit here gushing about the figure if I don't cut myself off eventually. But I felt like it's such a dark horse. I feel like so many people have forgotten about this guy because he came out so early in the year and everyone at the time was like, oh yeah, this is great. This is a great figure. And then as more and more figures came out this year, he got more and more forgotten about. But not for me. I just keep coming back to this guy. He is such a great figure. He is far and away the best Black Series figure of 2023. So there you have it. Those were my picks for the top 10 best Black Series figures of 2023. So let me pass this subject off to you. It's my favorite subject of the year. What were your picks for the best figures of the year? What were some really great Black Series figures that you got this year? I don't think anyone can be in any doubt that this this year we have had a fantastic year. Probably the best year we've ever had and it just fills me with so much hope for where this line is going. I don't know where some of these 
D-list YouTubers talking about the end of the Black Series. Now, all oh, the glory days are over, the golden age is done. Oh, the line's got maybe one or two years left to it. What are you on? What are you smoking? Because it's not doing you any good. The line is better now than it ever has been. Whether you're talking about character choice or articulation or paintwork, just the artistry of making great action figures. That's what keeps bringing me back to this line. So yeah, I am desperate to hear your picks for your favourite figures of the year. I'm sure there are some great choices out there. I feel like my list was deeply personal this year. It was all down to the figures that brought me the most joy, like the ones that I sat staring at more than any of the others. So, a couple of wildcard picks in there, but what are you going to do? As much as I love discussing this topic, next week I am even more excited because we're taking everything that we've gained this year and we are revisiting the top 10 best Black Series figures of all time. We're revisiting it and we're seeing what changes have been made to that ranking. And I want to get out there and say it first, just because you made the list last year does not guarantee you a spot on the list this year. There have been so many great new figures that I love for different reasons. I'm predicting a massive change up in the rankings for the all time, so be sure to check that out next week. In the meantime, however, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were my picks for the top 10 best Black Series figures of 2023. You may subscribe when ready. You did it again. What's wrong with you? Fet. Boba Fet? What is fat? <laughs>